Hey everyone, welcome back. Choosing a Pandora box can be pretty confusing, and it's near impossible to say that one outclasses them all. A wise man once said, all the Pandoras are wrong. Welcome to the jungle. But in today's video, we're going to clear everything up. We'll show you the best Pandora boxes you can currently get your hands on, and we'll show you where each one shines. Sit back, get a cup of tea, and welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. We'll first check out Pandora boxes that are suitable for a Jammer Arcade with a 15kHz CGA monitor. If you want one to play old arcade games with a great looking video output, you can't go wrong with the Pandora X games. This one has 2600 titles on it, and it can be easily inserted into a candy cap. We can get it delivered for under $40, and it has a similar chipset to the Pandora 9H. The very snappy games list is in alphabetical order, mostly comprising of arcade titles. The only exception is a handful of PlayStation games sitting at the end. This is an excellent choice for older arcade games, up to and including Neo Geo. And it's the only Pandora box currently for sale that a stock has tight graphics via the Jammer Edge with no scaling issues. We won't be able to use the clock boost to fix Metal Slug 2, but believe it or not, some people like it this way, such as Alex Murphy from the Detroit Police Department. Unfortunately, this one maxes out at the arcade version of Mortal Kombat, and that's why there's some PlayStation games at the end of the games list. We've got Mortal Kombat Trilogy that runs well, but has no music. And there's also Tekken 3 that just runs really slow. So you can just hide these games and stick to the classics. For the best all-rounder for Jammer, we're going to choose the Pandora Box DX. It's just over $50 and it has 3,000 titles. And compared to the X games, this one has many more features, such as better performance, a search function, save states, better controller support, and support for Pandora. With this, we can add more systems, fix button assignments, and even remove the blur filter. This can make the image look great, but unfortunately, we need to adjust the monitor hitch size manually, depending on the game. Neo Geo games like Metal Slug use less horizontal pixels than something like Street Fighter. So you need to get in here, give it a wiggle, and we can play Metal Slug with no slowdown. Of course, if you don't want to keep playing with the knob, we can activate the blur and have it resize automatically. But even with the blur on, all CPS games look great, as the video output of this Pandora box is exactly equal to the output of those CPS titles. We can also use the Pandora box DX on this VGA CRT. This display only accepts 640x480, so the newer Pandora boxes like the EX and 10th with 720p output have issues, but with the DX, it just works. If we choose to have no blur, we do come into some slight scaling issues, but as we have a higher resolution than a CGA monitor, the use of the blur actually works to the benefit of this Pandora box. Now we'll move on to the best classic arcade box for HD displays. And yet again, we have the DX. This time it's going to be the family version, unless you have a jammer harness that you need to use. The DX Special has 2000 more games than the regular DX, but they're nothing more than space fillers for consoles like the NES. So if you have a choice, go with the original 3000. Much like the previous Jammer DX, the menu is nice and snappy. We can search, we can also add Pandora DX, giving us many features and the speed boost in Metal Slug 2. And as we can import PlayStation saves, we've got all the characters unlocked in Tekken, and these games play great. And not to forget we have save states and multiple added systems, such as the Versus Game Boy, Amiga, and Quake. But don't forget, this is for arcade games, and those classic games shine on the Pandora Box DX, with Pandora DX. Now we'll take a look at Pandora Boxes built for vertical games. The DX can do this with Pandora, but if you want a vertical menu, there's only a couple of boxes that can provide it. This is the Air Attack 3, which is available for around $50. We'll need to use the VGA port for video, and as there are no USB ports or power plug, it'll need to be provided through the Jammer Edge. And if you do try and plug it into a CGA candy cab, it gives you a nice message. The Air Attack 3 is simply straight to the point. 161 vertical games in a long, unordered list. There is no aspect ratio correction, and we do have a slight bilinear blur, but that's okay. The games are very snappy, and we have very little input latency. Due to a weak CPU, the all winner A13, some games do have slowdown, and emulation isn't perfect across the board. For example, Zaxxon here has no sound. 
but if you want to step up the game, there is the vertical version of the DX called the King of Air 2. We couldn't find it for this video, but we did make a video review earlier. We have one long list of 516 vertical games, with an option screen that's very similar to a Pandora Box DX. We have controller support, but at stock, there's a HD filter on every game. But we can remove this using Pandora DX, as well as remove the bilinear filter, so we can see all them lovely pixels. Oh yeah, and we can squish it as well. We do have sample support, so Zaxxon does have sound. And we also have some rudimentary trackball support. It's basically not optimized, and the settings need to be changed manually. And if you try and use it in the CGA resolution, there's no King of Air, but we get Pandora DX. Two systems in one. Next up is for best Pandora box at stock. This is the Pandora box 10th V2. This one has all the standard connections, and it makes us an easy upgrade to a previous Pandora box. You can add games to this, but it's not its strong suit, as game settings and save files are just impossible to get at. And with this being one of the higher priced Pandora boxes, it's very shocking to see this generic micro SD. Saying that, we do have great controller support, with a very nice menu of over 5,000 games embracing systems such as Dreamcast, PSP, Naomi, and Atomus Wave. To easily find games, we do have a search menu, and at stock, we do see pixels. It's not integer scaled, but it does look very nice. And the scanline filter included is the best from any Pandora box we've ever seen. The UI itself is actually quite nice, if you can ignore the obnoxious sounds. There's a simple way to map your buttons, we can save and load state, and we can change from 4.3 to 16.9 aspect ratio. But similar to the previous Jammer version, we have absolutely no control over dip switches and emulation settings, so if there's something you want to change, you won't find it here. So if you wanted to import a save file to unlock all characters, the only way you can do this is to nag 3A, and eventually they may add it to a firmware update. But it is absolutely great to see they've added a Thomas Wave and Naomi, so we have the absolute best of 2D fighting games. And they've also included a few PSP games that are two-player. This was one of our favourite features for the Pandora Games 3D that works very well, but the version of P -P 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 that they're using is extremely old now, and in Tekken 6 it has a famous leg jiggle. The 10th, or the Retro Shooter for the console version, is also one of the first Pandora boxes to feature light gun support. They're fairly accurate, and probably the easiest way to get into emulating these kinds of games. It's pretty good at what it does, but there are still some issues, such as audio delay in Mega Drive and Dreamcast emulators, but fingers crossed they can sort this in a firmware update. The next section, we're going to go for the Pandora box to get. And previously we had the 3D Saga, but not today. The Saga 3D was good, but this is better. What we have here is the Alpha 3D Max, and it can be had for $45 plus postage. The PMP can be pretty expensive, so get in bulk. This one has two headers, one for Player 1 and Player 2, and one for 3 and 4. If you wanted to use a zero delay encoder or USB controllers, we're sad to say they're fixed to players 3 and 4, but there is a saving grace. The system can be updated by simply burning a micro SD, and as all the data is on this card, it's very difficult to break this Pandora box. At stock, the system stretches the image to the full screen, but much like the DX, we've made our own pack of fixes. The Alpha 3D Max does take a while to load up, but then we're straight into the games menu. There are two variations of this board, the Alpha 3D Max and the Gun Max, with the only difference being that the latter has over 103 light gun games and a few more arcade games included. We have a favorites list, history, and a search menu, and we can filter by game type or system emulator. And what is very unique about this system is we have a trackball menu, as well as the older arcade games up to and including Atomic Wave and PSP. But the great thing about this board is we have access to arcade settings and saves, so we can unlock extras and fiddle about if something doesn't work right. For example, extra characters, or speeding up games like this. While we do have save state and load state, there is no scanline filter, but I'm pretty sure we can add this in the future, as we have access to the RetroArch settings. It has no problem in running the classic titles, and with Pandora Max we've added aspect ratio and removed the bilinear filter, so we can have some fun on Neo Geo, and on the Mega Drive, with no audio latency issues. And on Naomi, Capcom vs SNK2 is nice and tight. Admittedly, Tekken on the PSP does need frame skip, and it doesn't support two-player, but this version of Buzzerper is actually very new compared to the other boxes, and who'd really care when arcade games run this well? Let's have a play with our blue ball. Here we have full analog input, 
with a USB trackball or mouse. This little trackball works, as well as the Logitech USB dongles. Four! And here's a reminder that Return of the Jedi is pretty poor. <laughs> it's a terrible game. And if you pay an extra $70, you can get one of the light guns. They look very similar to a Namco GunCon, and they use the aim track system, with the D-pad and two buttons. And while it is quite accurate, if you move, it can lose calibration. And while all of the games are playable, there can be a little slowdown when playing House of the Dead 2. And finally, for the most powerful Pandora box available, the Pandora Gun Max PC version. Now while the interface is very similar to the Alpha 3D Max, this one is a full-fledged PC. Well, an Intel N5095 mini PC. It's a 4-core, four 4-thread, four 2.9GHz CPU, and as it's on the x86 architecture, it allows us to easily run the real arcade Tekken and Killer Instinct games. It's got 4GB of RAM and an SSD. There are options to have this in a regular bar top, and for the slightly cheaper option, we can use it like a console. So we've got the button for the on and off, and these wired, cheapy PlayStation 2 controllers. And of course, the light guns. The system loads up Windows first, then it automatically loads up the Pandora Gun Max front end. We can use the game controllers to navigate the menu, or the D-pad on the gun controller. And while this has less games than the previous Gun Max, it supports more arcade systems, so we have Model 2 emulation with Virtua Cop 1 and 2. And compared to the previous boards, House of the Dead 2 runs much better. Carnival is on this machine, but it runs a little slow. We've not really changed many settings on the Gun Max PC yet, but what we can say in confidence is this Pandora box has by far the most potential. We hope this video has helped you find a suitable Pandora box. Each one has a flaw, and if you want something more customizable, best picking up a mini PC and using Batisera. To finish up, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We make video reviews, guides, and fix them cheap arcade boxes, and also the A500 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please join our Patreon, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Use as a Windows PC. Our only other PC is a Linux computer.